All right. Uh, boys, what's factor? things that multiply to get the product, right? Two factors multiply to get a product, or three factors multiply to get a product. So this chapter is mostly about factoring, but we're not factoring normal numbers usually. So like, what are the factors of 20? You guys remember this? One and 20. 22 and 10. Four and five. Okay, those six things are factors of 20. Um, do you guys remember what it's called if a number only has two factors? Um, Prime. Composite. Shh. Composite. Uh, Prime. Composite. So we're not really doing, I mean, we're doing a little bit of this, but that's not, mostly not what we're doing. But it's related to that. So we're doing the polynomial factoring. And we're going to learn three different ways to do it. Today we're going to learn the first way. And I call it take stuff out. It's my technical terminology. The book calls it factoring out a common monomial. I like yours better. What's it? You guys remember what a monomial was? We just took a test on that. Plus four is one term. Yeah. Yeah, one, a one term thing. So here's an example. So it's kind of the opposite of what we did last chapter. Last chapter, you know, we multiplied stuff together and on a lot of the problems, this chapter we're breaking it apart because there's certain kinds of problems you can solve by breaking stuff apart into its factors. Um, let me start with the basic one here, 9x minus 3. Okay, we got two terms. What can go into both of these terms? What can multiply into both of these terms? Three. Three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a three out, kind of like a reverse distribution problem. So if I divide both of these by three, what's left over here? What's that divided by three? Three x. Three x. What's that divided by three? Zero. No? One. One. Minus one. Okay, this is the first kind, this is the take stuff out factoring. What did I take out? The three. Now when I say take out, I really divided it out, right? What would happen if I, like we did last chapter, if I multiplied that back in? It'd be that, right? So there's some times where you want to break stuff apart like this. Some certain kinds of, we'll do a few word problems, I have to do it, but um, anyway, that's what kind of what we're doing today. It does get a little bit harder, but just the letters. Like if there was an x cubed and an x squared over here, uh, I could take out more than just a three. How many x's could I take out of both of these? Two. two. They both have at least two. So I would have had to done that. Anyway, we'll do some problems here. Ready? Number one, find the GCF. What on earth is a GCF? Greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. So, there is a kind of a fancy way to do this. Eat with the tree. You guys actually remember that from seventh grade? Yeah. If you did it. I mean, that was fourth grade, but I do remember you did, you did it in eighth grade too? Without me? Yes. Um, you could do the tree, and uh, it's more, the tree's more useful for like big numbers. Uh, and then when you're finding the greatest common factor, you use the least of each kind of prime. That, that was the tree method. But let's go ahead, which is the hardest number? Probably number one is the biggest numbers. So we probably won't need the tree method. What goes into 45? Always start with one. Does two go into it? Three? Four? Five? Six? 
6 times 7 is 42, so no. 7, no. 8, no. 8 times 5 is 48, times 6 is 48. 9, we've got here 9 times 5. Once you get to something on the right side, you're done. Do you guys remember that trick from Sunday school? So I just went 1 through, I kept going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once I got to 9, it's on the right side. I, that means I've checked everything. Okay, 1 and 75, 2. 15. 15. Does 2 go to 75? No. no, it's not even. 3. You guys remember the 3 stick? 7 plus 5 is 12. Does 3 go to 12? Yes, 3 goes to 25. 3 times, yeah, 3 quarters, right? 75 cents. 4, no. Even numbers, here's the trick. You might not know this. Even numbers only go into even numbers. Notice these are all odd over here. Anyway. Uh, 4 doesn't work. 5. 15. Uh, six. No. No, it's just a six. It's an even. It won't work. Seven. Mm -hmm. no, seven times eleven is seventy-seven. So no. Eight. No. Nine. No. Ten. No. Eleven. Seventy-seven. No. Uh, twelve. No. Thirteen. Let's see. Uh. It, it doesn't. I'm trying to think of 13 times 5 is 65. It just doesn't work. Uh, 14, no. 15, right there. Anyway, that's everything. What's the greatest? This one, number one was the hardest on this. What's the greatest common factor? What's the biggest number they have in common? No. So look at the biggest one on this 45, no. Second biggest, 15. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, number one's 15. Number two, there's not a lot of things that go into 33 and 51, but neither of them are prime. You guys, what goes into 33? Three and 11. What goes into 51? Three and 17. So they're not prime. Not a lot of things go into them, though. Number three. Okay, we have some letters. That's, we're starting to get more of what this chapter is about. Okay, what goes into 24, the biggest thing that goes into 24 and 32? Six does not go into 32. This is... Eight. Yeah. These two numbers are eight apart. If... I don't know if I can explain this well, but if the numbers are eight apart, the greatest common, the greatest thing the common factor could be is eight. What about the x and the y? Okay, so do the numbers normally, and then on the x's and the y's, you would say how many x's go into both of them? How many x's do they have in common? Yeah, one x. How many y's do they have in common? Zero. Zero. So the greatest common factor is 8 and x. That means 8x can be multiplied into both of them. What would I multiply 8x by to turn it into 24x? 3. What would I multiply 8x by to turn it into 32xy? 4y. So this is a common factor, the biggest common factor for both of them. Anyway. Alright, what? It's about the problem. It's like 18. Is that the one where I distribute? I think you tell me that. It's a subtraction. Right? Okay. Okay, number five. So just letters on this one. So we're going for common factor. So how many x's do they have in common? That doesn't mean how many X's are there in total. It means how many do they both have? At least. So, X squared. 
Whoops, I wrote that wrong. One of those is supposed to be a Y. How many Y's do they have in common? Two. Two. So the greatest common factor is X squared Y squared. They both have to have at least that many, right? For it to be able to go into it. Okay, number seven. Uh, okay, seven is where we're actually going to start factoring, like I did at the original example. So 3x plus 3y, what, we're taking stuff out, what can go into both of those? Three. Three. And then in parentheses, what's left if I divide 3 out of both of those? So x plus y. x plus y. You guys know how I can tell if I did that right or not? If you multiply this back together, it should go back to this. So we don't want to do that because it would just be the original thing every time. We are breaking it apart into factors. What we're saying is this times this equals that. That's why these are factors. Factoring is breaking apart. Kind of the opposite of what we did last chapter, where we put it together. Number nine, 8x minus 32y. Okay, what goes into, what's the biggest thing that goes into 8 and 32? 8. How about letters? What letters can I take out about those? Um, can it just be x minus? Can I take an x out? No, there's no x over here to take out. Can I take a y out? No. no, there's no y over here. So all I can do on this one is take out an 8. What's left if I take an 8 out, divide an 8 out of both of these? If I take an 8 out of this, what's left? The x. x. 32 divided by 8? Negative 4y. 4y. x minus 4y. come out of both of those terms, a squared and a. You can take an a out of both of them. So a goes in front of the parentheses. What's left if I divide by an a? a squared divided by a? a. Minus a divided by a. One. One. It's never nothing. <laughs> kind of like last chapter when we were doing the division problem. It was, it was at least one. 13. X squared Y plus WZ. Okay. What goes into both of these terms? So what are we, what do you think you meant right? Well, I'm in the right time. Nothing goes into both of these. I mean technically we could take a one out, but dividing by one is like doing nothing. So that's basically a prime. Hold on. Uh, let me check how many even primes there are. One. Okay. You guys got that? There is one even. That, that You can't do anything on just right prime. Number 15. 7x squared minus 49xy plus 28y squared. So we got three terms this time. This might trick us. What can we take out of all three terms? Seven. Seven. Those are all multiples of seven, right? Uh, how about letters? Any letters come out of all three? No. No. This guy doesn't have any X's. 
so I can't take an X out. This guy doesn't have any Ys, so I can't take a Y out. It's got to go into all of them, all or none. So I'm taking a 7 out. What's left on the first term if I divide by 7? X squared. X squared minus 7XY. Seven 7XY seven plus 4Y squared. 4Y squared. Not too bad, is it? No. Yeah. I feel like it's on campus. <laughs> well, I mean, we're like two thirds of the way done. That's not going to get much worse. Just a few letters involved. 17. 6a squared plus 3a. Alright. What comes out of all those? Um, 6. 6. Any letters? Um, no. No, 24 doesn't have any letters. What's left if I divide by 6? A squared. 48 divided by 6? 8A. 24 divided by 6. Uh, same direction. I think they just put on the B section, they just put more letters. Basically, all these have letters coming out. All right. Uh, number, what number, what can I take out of six and three number wise? Three. Three. You can multiply in both of those. Uh, how many A's can I take out? Oh, one. One. Okay. They both have to have that, at least that many. Or else we couldn't divide it out. So they have, they both have at least one A. And how many B's can I take out? Um, one. One. They both have at least one B. So basically I'm taking the least of the A's, the least of the B's, the least of whatever. Um, okay. So dividing this out. Six divided by three is two. A squared divided by A. Uh, 3 divided by 3, 1, one. A divided by A, Cancel. 1, B squared divided by B, B, B. So it's just 1B or just B. Where do you want this? Um, put it on my desk, I'll probably do it immediately. Guess what goes into 91 and 13? 13. Yeah, there's only, 13 is a prime number, right? The only thing that goes into 13 is 1 times 13. 7. 7 doesn't go into 13. Well, 7 goes into 91, but what goes into both of these? 13. 13. So, if one of your numbers is prime, 13 is like the only option. Either it works or it doesn't. And 91 divided by 13 is 7. So yeah, it goes into it. Okay, how many A's can I take out on this one? Uh, two. Two. They both have at least two. How many B's can I take out? One. One. They both have at least one B. Okay. Uh, 91 divided by 13, I believe just said it, what was it? Seven. Seven. A to the third divided by A squared. A. B squared divided by B. B. And then plus 13 divided by 13, A squared divided by A squared, B divided by B. They're all one. Yeah. So just one. One. So that's the answer, right? Yeah. That's There's all of the answer. 
No, this was the, I just copied the book. Well, yeah, but besides that, after the equals. Yeah, all this after the equals. Okay. Okay. What goes into 14 and 15? It's prime. Yeah, they have nothing. How many X's can we take out? None. None. How many Y's? None. None. How many Z's? None. So, yeah, this is a prime. There's only. So we had two odd primes, but there's only one even prime. Okay. On 24, guys, what could I take out of both of those on 24? Um, 2 and pi. Okay, you can take a 2 and a pi out. Alright, give that a go. Give it a go. 